This is the story of a secret nuclear facility in the USSR, or the formerly USSR, now Russia. My name is Trish Thomas Mink, and I'm here to talk to you today about Mayak. Uh, Mayak is located in the southern Ural Mountains in Russia, about 800 kilometers from s Moscow. Imagine, it was August 1945, well you don't have to imagine this because it actually happened, and the United States had just dropped the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the ones that devastated Japan and ended the World War II in the Pacific arena. Joseph Stalin, the ruler of the Soviet Union, decided that the USSR was lacking in nuclear weaponry by the comparison of the United States. So in complete secrecy, he built the means to catch up with the United States nuclear arsenal. He created Mayak. Mayak was a secret nuclear facility, and it was set way far away from all the cities where it could operate in complete secrecy. And until recently, you couldn't find it on a map, and it still exists today. But at that time, there were about 70 to 80,000 people that were sentenced to gulags and prisons that were um, required to work at the facility. They were brought in from the different nearby prisons. 1918, after the revolution, or after the excitement of the revolution wore down in the 1920s and early 30s, the Soviet people began to turn on the leadership when the promise of the empowerment of the workers fell short. During the 1930s, the Soviet people were starving, and so they began to rebel against communism. Stalin was not kind to his dissidents. It is said that he killed anywhere from 3 to 25 million people during his reign of terror. And like I said, others were sent to prisons, gulags, and labor camps. A cheap and plentiful source of labor for Mayak were these prisoners as communists turned on their enemies, real or imagined. A sentence of forced labor in the uranium mines became commonplace in the early 1950s as the regime clamped down on dissident and unrest as it continued to fail to deliver on its political and economic promises. There was no consideration paid to the workers' safety at this location or responsibility for the disposal of waste materials. They were literally dumped the waste into the Tekka River and many of the small lakes in the area. Tons of contaminated materials were produced, optimized for plutonium production. The reactors used thousands of gallons of um, water to cool down the facility every day. Everything was set up really quick, like in 18 months, so they could be competitive with the U.S. Well, what happened is um, they first got their first atomic bomb. It was called First Lightning, and it was exploded in 1949. It was the first Soviet nuclear test. It detonated a plutonium bomb, the RDS-1. Now the code designation RDS was actually arbitrary and kind of meaningless, but people gave names to it along the way, like um, Rekitikvi. Okay, I'm not going to try to say this one. I'm going to put it below so you can read it because I'm going to I'm going to destroy it. But Stalin's rocket engine is really basically what it meant. Another was Russia does it alone. The whole focus on the Soviet program at this point was to set off a Soviet atomic blast at the earliest possible time, whatever the cost. And it would is also was an exact copy of the US gadget the Fat Man design. Now, on November 22, 1955, the Soviets exploded their first super bomb. It was an H-bomb, a hydrogen bomb. This device was designated RDS-37. It was the Soviet Union's first test of a two-stage radiation implosion. This was also the world's first air-dropped fusion bomb test. After this test, the Soviet Union um, used radiation implosion exclusively instead of the the Sloika or the layer cake approach. It was in their design. Um, I'll provide a link so you can read more about that, but they call it a layer cake design. 
Now, along with the secret facility, there was a secret city. This was for the scientists, the workers, and their families. It had about 100,000 people in it. It was a living facility alongside the nuclear facility. It was called um, Chelyabinsk. Chelyabinsk. I think I'm pronouncing it semi-close. Chelyabinsk, um, 40. And there's a city called... Um, Chelyabinsk, that's further south, but this one had a dash 40, so it was specific. It's also known as City 40 and was surrounded by guards, gates, and barbed wire fences. It was now known as Ozyorsk. Ozyorsk? Until recently, you also couldn't find it on a map, and the Russians denied it existed. And he, there's some interesting things about it. No visitors were allowed. The people inside the city were not allowed to send letters or make contact with the outside world. The Soviets erased them from their records, and to their families back home, they were listed as missing. Now, working at the facility was really a death sentence. People generally didn't live more than five years or so. And here's another thing. You couldn't refuse once you were asked. Once you were invited, you knew a state secret and would be executed if you turned them down. I found this site, um, and all of the sites that I use as reference material are always in the notes at the bottom, but I visited, there was an eyewitness account of what it was like, and I think they brought in music at some point. I'm not sure how they were allowed to access the city, but this is what they said. The bus dropped the musicians off in an underground city, complete with buildings, streets, shops, and pedestrians. According to the musicians, the underground structure was huge, described by some to be four stories tall with massive overhead lights to illuminate and mimic natural daylight. Conditions at Chelambitsk 40 meant incentives were necessary to entice Russians to work there, and witnesses' accounts reveal there were plenty. There were stores that allegedly stocked with rare and exotic foods, premium wines and liquors adorned the shelves, and expensive clothing and jewelry seemed to appear there before it hit major cities, and all for unusually low and affordable prices. The musicians did not know how what the workers did at Chelambisk, Chelambisk 40, I know I'm, I'm desecrating this, what they did or why they were offered such wonderful merchandise at bargain basement prices, but they did know they were sick immediately following their two-hour performance. Two accounts reported that they had the most terrible headache they've ever experienced after only being there for a couple of hours. So I stated earlier, the waste from Mayak was dumped into the Tekka River. This river was the water supply for about 23 to 24 villages along the banks. The pollution became so bad that it was discovered in the Arctic Ocean. So Mayak started dumping it in Lake Karache, um, in part because it didn't have an outlet, so it was contained. To limit the exposure, they put barbed wire up along the river so people couldn't access the water. But they didn't tell the people why, so nobody knew why. This led to the infamous explosion that was second only to Chernobyl in the 1980s. And in 1957, it was one of the biggest nuclear disasters ever. A containment sector failed and exploded. Radiation immediately spread throughout the region, affecting anywhere from 250 to 500,000 people. They did not evacuate the people for about 10 days. It, was, it happened underground in a secret facility, and the public knew nothing about it. The military came in and evacuated the people. They burned their crops and villages to the ground. They shot the farmers' livestock. They had to literally just get the heck out of there. And there were people that were already looking ill, like something had happened to them as they evacuated the area. It's said that the CIA knew about the disaster, but they decided to keep it a secret from American people because many of them live near nuclear plants and they didn't want them to be concerned. Now, since 1978, Russia has been trying to clean up Lake Karache, which is considered the most polluted place on Earth, by the way. They say anyone, anyone standing on the lake shore would receive a lethal dose of radiation, which they list as 600 rem, in an hour. 
The lake has migrated several kilometers and they've filled it with concrete blocks and dirt to form a near surface permanent and a dry nuclear waste facility. They say at last report, there's a link, um, that the radiation is now going down. That's what they say.